Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IAS. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains. So in this video we will be talking about our current affairs series in which what we do, we daily discuss MCQs from your current affairs perspective. So today is 15 November, so let's see what are the questions for today. So the first question is consider the following statements about money bill. First statement is it is defined in the constitution of India under article 110 that is 110. Second in case of any dispute regarding whether a bill is a money bill or not, it is the authority of president of India to decide on the matter. So we have to choose that which of these statements is are correct. Let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is first. Uh, because second statement is not correct uh, because uh, the authority to decide whether a bill is a money bill or not uh, it is of speaker of the Lok Sabha and not of the president of India so the solution is C uh, so this question uh, uh, is in the context of a recent decision of uh, interim order that is passed by Supreme Court uh, relating to the appointments to tribunals uh, uh, that shall be on the basis of existing statutes according to Supreme Court and not the rules frame, uh, framed under Finance Act of 2017 so more detail you can check in today's the Hindu uh, so uh, this question has been framed upon uh, based on uh, based on uh, the new on a news that that appeared in the Hindu and now let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements first India is a secular state with no official religion of its own second article 25 to article 30 of the Constitution deal with certain religious freedoms granted to an individual as his or her fundamental right so we have to choose that which of the above statements is are correct uh, let me tell you friends that both of these statements are correct uh, yes India is a secular state and article 25 to 30 uh, they deal with fundamental rights uh, relating to religious freedoms so uh, answer should be C, C uh, that is both 1 and 2 so recently this question has been framed in the context of uh, recent decision of Supreme Court in which it has constituted seven judge bench to uh, to review uh, to to uh, to to, uh, to deal with the review petitions that challenged uh, the verdict that uh, uh, that was given by it in 2018 that uh, to allow the entry of women of all go age groups in the Sabrimala temple now let's move to the next question next is recently a state government has introduced Nadu Nadu program to boost up government schools it is a Telangana B Tamil Nadu C Andhra Pradesh D Karnataka so friends the answer is uh, C Andhra Pradesh so this program has been introduced in Andhra Pradesh to boost up the infrastructure and other facilities in the government schools including uh, uh, making it necessary to teach education uh, English uh, to teach English from class 1 so English labs will be set up for the purpose so aim is basically to transform uh, all the government schools with required infrastructure and specifically uh, uh, focusing upon English also so other things that uh, that uh, that are that are to be provided in this scheme uh, are uh, basically uh, providing basic amenities like clean water furniture compound walls toilets extra so criticism is uh, that uh, uh, some or uh, some some sections in the uh, Andhra Pradesh are they, they are saying that Telugu uh, will, will get marginalized in this context but then there is also need for English education due to English being a global language. Now let's move on to the next question. Next is consider the following statements. First, world heritage sites are protected under Geneva Convention and the Hague Convention for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict and international law. Second, India has 36 heritage sites, um, uh, 30 being cultural, 5 natural and 1 mixed. So we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct. Let me tell you friends that only one statement is correct and that is first. So second statement is correct uh, is not correct because uh, India has not 36 world heritage sites rather it has uh, uh, as of now it has 38 world heritage sites out of which 37 are culture uh, sorry 30 are cultural uh, seven are there of uh, uh, natural importance and then one one is categorized as mixed so solution is a recently world heritage week week is being celebrated by UNESCO from November 19 2019 to November 25 so the objective is to increase awareness among people about safety and preservation of cultural heritage uh, heritages and monuments so 38 world heritage sites are located in india out of which 30 are cultural and seven are natural and one mixed site so india has the sixth largest number of sites in the world and uh, UNESCO world about UNESCO world heritage sites uh, basically it is a list uh, that is maintained by UNESCO uh, of, of uh, special uh, of the sites that are of special cultural physical uh, significance 
so list is maintained by unesco world heritage uh, program so uh, this uh, uh, this committee the, the uh, of world heritage uh, uh, this unesco committee it is composed of 21 members uh, which are elected uh, by the general assembly so then uh, selection uh, is based on the criteria that is uh, criteria that is uh, 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 the site must be an already classified landmark so it must be unique in some respect as, uh, as a geographical or historically identifiable place having special cultural or uh, physical significance so it may also signify uh, signify a remarkable accomplishment of humanity and serve as evidence of our intellectual history on the planet so legal status is that uh, the the site is uh, basically uh, the uh, it basically remains within the territorial jurisdiction where where the site is uh, or it, it it remains within the territorial jurisdiction of the country where the site is actually located so but then it is regulated by 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 it is uh, it is regulated under Geneva Con Convention uh, that is uh, that is related to law of war and then also Hague Convention that is there for protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict and international law. So then there are also uh, there is also one list that is maintained by UNESCO that is the endangered sites. So when it uh, when a particular site is uh, added to it, basically it, it is then when there are conditions that threaten the very characteristics for which the landmark or area was ins inscribed on the list. So many problems could be there that 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 can be armed conflict and war, or can there can be natural disasters or pollution or poaching, or the un uncontrolled urbanization that take place. Um, so uh, this danger is list is intended to increase awareness of the threats and to encourage counteractive measures. So the review uh, state of conservation for each site on the danger list is reviewed on a yearly basis. After which the committee may request additional me measures or may delete the property from the list if the threats have ceased, uh, or or consider deletion from both the list of the world heritage in danger and the world heritage list. Now next, let's move to the last question of the day. Last question is question five. Coalition for Disaster Resilience Infrastructure is an initiative launched by. So friends, it is an initiative launched by India. So basically, this question has been framed in the context. Text of recent, uh, 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 we can say, emphasization made by the Prime Minister of India at the leaders' dialogue with BRICS Business Council and New Development Bank, to uh, in which he asked to ask the BRICS countries and NDB to join the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure. So it was launched by India's Prime Minister in September 2019 at the UN Secretary General meeting, uh, uh, a summit that on climate action in New York, US. So it is basically a platform that is uh, that has been set up to generate knowledge and uh, to exchange it uh, uh, to on different aspects of disaster and climate resilience of infrastructure so that uh, a mechanism could be created to assist countries to upgrade their capacities and practices so uh, benefits obviously you uh, you uh, you may be very well aware of the fact that disasters uh, the frequency as well as uh, intensity of disasters is increasing in present uh, present times due to various uh, 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 various uh, causes specifically the specific cause uh, uh, one most uh, one specific cause is there of climate change and then also increasing population increasing consumption so that's why in this context, uh, uh, this coalition for uh, disaster resilience infrastructure has been launched. So why we need gl uh, global coalition? Because simply many countries uh, have over the years developed a uh, um, better disaster management practices that have uh, helped in reducing the casualties as well as uh, other uh, physical uh, uh, losses that happen during a disaster. But then economic costs uh, remain huge because uh, the, this is due to the uh, damage caused to, uh, caused to big infrastructure. And also then there is uh, this uh, disaster. Uh, disaster is not just a problem of one country. So there are many types of disaster, for example, uh, specifically natural disasters that cut across uh, the boundary lines of the different countries. So uh, this coalition would address concerns that are common to developing and developed world and small and large economies and, uh, and countries that have moderate or high risk disaster risk. So friends, this is all about today's discussion of daily current affair MCQs. So if you like this discussion, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel. And lastly, friends, you can join our telegram channel, public telegram channel, the link of which is shown on your screen. And uh, the, on this telegram channel, we have more than 14,000 subscribers. So you can be part of these subscribers and can uh, have access to various public resources that we share in this channel for the purpose of UPSC. CSE preparation. So do ensure that you join our telegram channel by checking
checking the description box and this is our mail id and uh, this is our contact number so if in case of uh, any doubt queries you can mail us or contact us on these details so this is all about friends today's video do ensure that you subscribe to our channel so thank you have a very nice day ahead